praise the Lord. We're so good to be here again. And just thank God we've been graced by his goodness and mercy to get us through another week. And he is so faithful. And it's certainly good to be with you, my brothers and sisters today, and all of you that may be viewing from whatever angle and whatever place. Uh, we've been, uh, obviously, the last few messages, we've been in the book of Lamentation. We've been talking about lamenting and the fact that of how we believe that uh, God has uh, blessed us to be able to see the uh, transparency and all the particular aspects of what it really means to lament. And we have made the premises that uh, when we have things happening and all of us have things happen, we experience loss, different things in life. Uh, sometimes we don't know exactly how to express or what, how far we can express. But we've basically been able to see from the last few weeks and basically looking in the book of Lamentations, uh, basically the pattern that the prophet has used and how that uh, is open, transparent in every way. Uh, last week we talked about the fact that um, this particular message in this book uh, is actually five uh, chapters or what we would call five lament uh, poems and they all come together. We mention also that they are in the acrostic pattern in the Hebrew, which means it starts with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and ends with the last letter, which would be 22 characters. So every uh, 22 verses that we have in the book of Lamentations, at least in chapters 1, 2, and then in 4 and 5, from verses 1 to 22, every 22 verses, we go through the entire Hebrew alphabet. Of course, in chapter 3, uh, we have three times, 66 verse, so we have three times that. And then in chapter 4 and chapter 5, we go back to 22 verses. So it's just really expressing the fullness of God in every dimension and also expressing the fact that we need to be fully uh, transparent in everything, our pain, all the suffering, all that we're thinking, all the emotional thrusts and everything else. And I thank God for the book of Lamentations, as I said on the last message, because it really gives us a helpful insight and tool to understand that God promotes that we be totally open in every dimension in our expression. Now, in the last message, we talked about the fact that the prophet emphasizes three aspects uh, in this particular uh, book. He talks about the misery when he starts out in the beginning of the chapter one, he starts talking about how the pain and he actually depicts it as a weeping widow, uh, really shedding tears uh, and exposing the pain and agony. He goes through and then when we get down to chapter seven of uh, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter one, verse seven. He basically then talks about how that uh, the enemy is mocking. So he goes from misery to mockery. And then we talked about the progression of that when it comes to chapter three. Uh, verse 22, he begins to make a transition and he what we call the mega ministry. So he talks about the misery, the mockery and then the mega ministry. And we want to focus in on that this particular week of the impact of fact that when you begin to lament or when you begin to pour out your heart and when there's pain and when there's things that are going on, uh, you you have to be very careful when you're lamenting because you only can go so far before you have to have what I call a strategic interruption in your lamenting pattern. And that's what we're going to see uh, in this particular message is the fact that the uh, prophet, although he's gone through 22 verses in chapter one, 22 verses in chapter two, uh, and then when he gets through uh, chapter three, when we get uh, almost to the 22nd verse, as he begins to conclude that acrostic pattern, he makes a statement. And uh, he really gives us insight. And we want to look at verse number 18. And based upon what he says in verses 18 through 20, it gives us some insight and depth on why we need to have strategic and divine interruption when we're lamenting, meaning that we go on for a while. But at some point in time, we have to be able to stop where the particular flow we're going in and we have to insert something or, or what we call a really a strategic interruption in order to break the pattern and the flow so that we can go on. But in verse number 18, he says this, I said my strength and my hope. I said my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Remember my afflictions and roaming, the wormwood and the gall. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. 
Now, notice what he says there. As you read this book, at no point in time has he ever come to this kind of statement. So it's almost like he's lamenting and things are building up and he begins to make an expression. But this is the key. After you go so long, after you lament so long, after you pour out your heart so long, something has to happen because there's a drag down. Look what happens here. He says, and the word said here is an imperfect tense in the Hebrew language, which means that he began to say repeatedly to himself, my strength and my hope have perished. My strength and my hope have perished. Now, the, the word perish in the Hebrew is a perfect tense, which means that it has come to a completeness. Uh, he, so he says, I'm repeatedly saying my strength and my hope have perished. So he's saying to himself, you know what? My strength is my strength is gone. My hope is perished, meaning that it has gone astray. That's what the Hebrew word really means, that my hope has gone astray. Now, you know, when you have something and then it goes off astray, uh, you never know where you're going to get it back or not. And this is what the writer is saying. This is what the prophet is saying. He said that things are really at this point so heavily upon my heart and so heavily upon my motion. He said, I, all my strength is gone. All my strength is gone. And, and, and all of my hope, all of my expectation have gone astray. Every, like it's run away from me. Have you, have you ever noticed after you lament, uh, you go through something so long, you can actually, after so long, it can look like and feel like that all of your strength is zapped out. And all of your expectations is going out. And then he goes on and say in verse number 20, my soul still remembers. So his soul remembers back when it was better. But his soul also remembers, or his person, he remembers all the climactic and chaotic activity that he's been observing and being a part of up until this point. And then verse 20, he says, my soul still remembers and sinks. Now, I mentioned about the Hebrew imperfect, which means it's a repeated action. It means that something is going on. It's not completed yet. That was said. Uh, remember the perfect. We're talking about something that has come to a completion, which is perish. Uh, in other words, my, my, my hope is totally, completely gone astray. I've got to catch it. And then in verse 20, he says that and, and when my soul or my being remembers, it sinks. The word sinks here. It is in an imperfect tense, which means uh, that uh, his soul, his entire being had begun to sink. Uh, it hadn't completely uh, gone to Australia. It had completely fallen out. It had completely been overwhelmed. It hadn't completely gone into total despair. But he's saying that my soul, all that's going on, all that I've been facing, all that I've been dealing with, my soul now is beginning to sink. It's beginning to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's what happens a lot of times when we stay in something for so long and and, and the, a loss is there for so long. And, and we remember and we are observing and we we're thinking and we're talking to ourselves. What we have to be careful is because something begins to sink. And the problem is once something sinks so low, a lot of times it's very hard to, to recover it. It's almost like if you were in the river or in the pond or in the pool, uh, if you sink. You know, so often you begin to sink. And if you're not careful in the sinking at some point in time, if there's not some kind of reversal, then you're going to be at the very rock bottom of everything and everything is going to be overwhelmed. So the writer is saying, the prophet is saying that I've gone through it so long. I've seen so much. I've gone through so much pain and agony, emotional in my loss. He said at this point in time, my hope is going astray. I don't, I got to try to get it back. And he says, at the same time, my soul, soul here is nephesh in Hebrew, which means my whole entire being is sinking. It feels like I'm just going low. I'm going down further and further. And brothers and sisters, let me ask you this. If you be honest, there's been things that you faced in life. There have been times when you've been going through things in life. And if you be honest, you, you say basically, it's almost like my expectation, my hope is gone someplace. Where is it? It doesn't seem like it's here. But then at the same time, there's a sinking that's going on. It seems like it goes lower and lower and lower and lower. And that's when the psalmist has to do something about it. And that's what I'm telling you when you're lamenting. It's all right to lament. It's all right to pour out in agony and pain. But at some point, after you've done it so long, you remember now, we have gone through almost 66 verses here before the psalmist comes to this point. But what he has to do, he has to interrupt the pattern. He can't keep looking at what he's looking at and thinking the way he's thinking and feeling what he's feeling without interjecting something. So you have to basically intentionally, when you're dealing with things in life, 
and dealing with agony and pain, at some point in time, you're going to have to interrupt that pattern or you're going to find yourself all the way to the bottom. And if you go all the way to the bottom, the way he's talking about how his soul is sinking, the danger will be, will he ever get up again? So he realizes that he's in the process of going low in, in life. And so what does he do at that point? Verse 21, you see the interruption. So in verses 21, he makes a statement. And there are three major statements that are made uh, that cause an interrupt pattern. First of all, in verse 21, now remember, he's in a sinking pattern. He's going down. He's feeling himself going out. He's going lower and lower. And you have to ask yourself, what can I do when I feel so overwhelmed? And I've been feeling like this for a long time. I've been looking at it for a long time. What can I do? We have to follow the pattern in this lamenting in order to get through. And what he said, this I recall to my mind. Now, when he says this in verse 21, we don't have any idea of what he's recalled to his mind. He knows, but we won't know till later on. He says, this I recall to my mind. So whatever it is he's recalled to his mind at this point in time is actually interrupting the pattern of this sinking soul. So what he called to mind actually at this point in time is going to start doing something to that sinking soul. And brothers and sisters, you have to have something. You have to bring something to your mind. You have to bring something to your memory when you're going down and you're overwhelmed and you've had it. I mean, it's been going on for a while. You're looking at things. You have to bring something intentionally to your memory. He says, this I recall to my mind. So whatever it is he recalls to his mind, it says, when I recall this to my mind, he says, therefore, that's the second thing. When I recall this to my mind, therefore I have hope. So whatever he's called to mind, whatever he's recalling now to his mind, in the midst of his sinking soul, whatever he's recalling, it causes him to have hope. And we're going to find out in a few moments what it was. This, this was, this is a Pacific thing. When you say this, it means that out of all the things that are going on, you have, you identifying something specific. So he's saying basically when I was in a sinking down low position, when I was losing it, when my hope was running all astray, he says, this I recall to my mind. This I recall to my mind. And what he recalls to his mind, he says, what I have in my mind, therefore I have hope. Now remember earlier, he said his hope and his strength and his hope had perished. It had gone astray. So it appears like whatever he's brought to his mind, he's able to actually start ringing in his hope. And a lot of times your hope and expectation can be dancing away. But if you can bring something to your mind, you can, if you can have a specific uh, in your mind, then you can basically grab hope before it gets too far gone and bring it back into the arena. And that's what the uh, lamenter has done here. He says, my, I was sinking, my, my hope and my, and my strength has perished, has gone astray, but I was sinking and this I recall to mind, this specific I recall to my mind. And what I recall to my mind, uh, Therefore, I have hope what I've called to my mind. So there, there has to be a this. You have to find a this when you're facing all kind of tragedy and pain. You have to eventually come up with a this and you can't look. You can only go so long. You notice that it, once he's gone through two chapters, now he's going through a third one. And, and at, at mid, about midway here on that 20, what that 21st verse, he, he makes a shift here. He's going down. But on that 21st verse, before he totally goes out of the uh, acrostic pattern of the Hebrew pattern before he comes to the total end uh, where in verse 22, before he comes to the total end in verse 21, he actually comes right up against the, almost the very end uh, of the acrostic cycle, almost at the very end of the Hebrew alphabet, almost at the very end uh, of the tall before he gets to the very end, before it's totally gone. He says, this I recall to my mind. And when I recall this to my mind, therefore I have hope. My God, he's able to get his hope back. He's able to drag the hope back in. He begins to pull it back in. So when you see it's going away and you see it sinking down, you got to deliberately, intentionally stop. And you've got to get something on your mind. You've got to recall. There has to be a this in your life. Whatever, your, it, whatever this is, fine for you. But it's got to be something that is about God. It has to be something specific. So this I recall in my mind. Therefore, I have hope. And then the third thing, the this he recalls the mind. And because of this that he recalls through his mind, it causes him to have hope. Whatever you recall to your mind about God, when you're sinking and going lower and you're feeling the pressure, whatever this, this is, it has to change the dynamics 
of what you're losing? Has it changed the dynamics of what's going astray? In verse 22, he, he basically tells you what this, this is. In verse 22, he says, Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because of his, his compassion, fail not. That, that was what changed it. This is what made him be able to grab hope again. When he's sinking down, he says, this I recall to my mind. And when I recall this, what is this? Now we know what this is. We know this is the mercies and the compassion of the Lord. So what he does is in the midst of all this sinking and going down, you won't find this no place further. I mean, before this in the book, nowhere. He's been going. He's been lamenting. He's been going. He's been going. He's been going. He's sinking. And now he interjects. He says, but. Now I have to do something about it because I'm getting too low. And brother and sister, you know when you're getting too low into it. You know when it's about ready to bury you. And you can do something about it. I can do something about it. We can do something about it. Because God has demonstrated enough that there can always be of this. So what he says, this what he recalls to his mind is that the Lord mercies and compassion has kept him alive. The Lord's mercy and compassion is the reason he hasn't been consumed. And you have to look at it and agree with, with the writer. When you begin to look at things at the way it has been on you and sometimes how it's going down and it appears like your hope is trying to run away from you, all you need to do is stop and have a this moment. You need to bring this to be some specific to your mind. And when you bring something specific to your mind about what God is and what God has done and who God is, about the attributes of God, about the work of God, when you bring this to your mind and begin to hold on that, when you begin to hold on that, because he brings it and he begins to chew on it, he begins to meditate on it, and he begins to do something to him, you can make a therefore, you can have a reason to begin to expect again. And what you, the reason that you're expecting again, and the reason you're able to bring in and not allow your hope to get lost, totally lost and gone out there, is because of the mercies and the compassion of the Lord. And that's what he says in verse number uh, 22, because of his compassion uh, fails not. And in verse 23, he says, they are new, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They are new every morning, glory to God. They are new every morning. So this is what stopped him from sinking to the bottom. This is what stopped him from sinking and being drowned in his sorrow and his pain. This is what stopped him from actually his hope being totally gone out of the picture. He says, I got this to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is the mercies and the compassion of God that I'm not consumed. And then he says, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. And verse 24, he says, the Lord is my portion. Portion here is inheritance. You know what an inheritance is? An inheritance is something that you receive, you obtain, you possess. It's something that belongs to you. So, the, so he's saying now, I, in all the midst of everything, the Lord is my portion. The Lord, I'm inheriting the love and the grace and the compassion of God in the midst of all that I'm going through. And he says that so Notice what he says now. Earlier in verse 18, he was said that he has said to himself, uh, my strength and my hope is gone. Now in verse number uh, 24, he says, the Lord is my portion. And he says, my soul, therefore, I hope in him. Notice his hope was going away, getting away. He began to pause. He interrupted. He had a specific. He says, this I recall to mind. Let me ask you this. Can you recall to mind now in the midst of whatever you're going through? Can you recall to mind the mercies and compassion of God? The fact that all you've been dealing with, that it has not consumed you. It has not taken you out. It may have overwhelmed you in many degrees, may have you feeling certain emotion and may even have you feeling the sinkiness in your being. But in the midst of your sinking, you said, this I recall to mind. Therefore, I have hope. I have expectation. I believe God is going to get me through this. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't believe that God was going to end what he was going through at the point. But he says, I have hope now. I have hope now because I have gone and returned to a, a thought. And so what I want you to do today, I want you in the midst of what you're dealing with right now, I want you just to pause. I want you to intentionally do what the, the lamenter did. I want you to bring something to your mind. 
In his case, we could borrow what he brought because all of us have experienced the mercy and compassion of God. And I want you to look at whatever you've been going through. But then I want you to look at the fact that in the midst of all of it, you have not been consumed. And the reason you have not been consumed is because of the mercies and compassion of God. And that is new every morning. And because of that, you can return to having expectation and hope. And you can stop a sinking soul and you can start gaining strength back again. I know it can be rather tough. We're in a tough time here uh, in our country, around the world, this pandemic. We're in a tough time with racial tension. We're in a tough time with uh, injustice. We're in a tough time in many situations. We're in a tough time a lot of times with their family situation, a lot of times their domestic situation. But what I wanna tell you is this, before you sink to the bottom and totally give up, would you recall and say this I recall to mind intentionally of the mercies and compassion of God and then says, therefore, because of this, I have hope. I have hope. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I say to my soul, I have expectation in God. I have a reason to expect. I have a reason to still expect God to get me through because of what? Of all the mercy and compassion that I witness and the fact that it's the mercy and compassion of God that I have not been consumed. I want to pray with you right now. And Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, my brothers and my sisters, as we are journeying through various things in life, some things are very difficult. Some things basically like the lamenter has said here in this book, uh, a lot of times strengths and hope seem to have perished. It seems to have gone away someplace. But I pray today that everyone on the sound of my voice will just take an intentional moment and interrupt that pattern of lamenting and begin to bring something to mind about the mercies and the compassions of God and the fact that they're not consumed. And Father, let them do just like the prophet did here. Let them make a declaration that because of God's mercy and compassion, I'm not consumed. Therefore, I have hope. I have hope. I believe that God will get me through. I expect that God will get me through. Now, Father, grace them and speak to them in the name of Jesus. And if you're watching today and you've never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, and you feel that, uh, I know you feel the sense of sinking deep and overwhelmed in the lostness of relationship with God. You can just stop. And because of the mercies and the compassion of God, you haven't been consumed in your lostness. And if you just look up to the Lord at this time as a heavenly father, I want you in my life. I want you to be Lord of my life. I thank you for loving me, for shedding your blood for me, for Jesus dying on the cross for me. And I thank you for his death, burial and resurrection. But I thank you, Lord, for your mercy and compassion of opening the invitation to me and telling me to come. And that's what he says, come to me all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, Jesus says, and learn of me. I will cause rest to come into your soul. So if you've made that prayer, then welcome to the family of God. And as the, the uh, announcement comes today, you'll actually have understanding of where you can uh, contact us, write us, and let us know that you've made a decision to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. You've made a decision to walk in relationship. And if you, uh, we'll be glad to help you. You can just basically follow the address that's coming in the announcement. Until the next time, my dear beloved, I'll see you. God bless you. Amen. Join us for our Zoom Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Or dial by calling in 1-312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 348-591-8252 and password 591. Join us. If you wish to contribute to the ministry, you may do so safely and securely at our website, www.glhc1.org and follow the online giving link. Mobile giving at cash app, dollar sign, GLHC Vision, or by mail, Gospel Lighthouse Church, 600 Freebus Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43206.